Okay, so this isn't really going to be like my traditional tutorial. I'm not going to run you through every single step that I'm doing here because I feel like that's already covered yep. in my yeah. Bay tutorial video. So um, I'm just kind of going to quickly give a voiceover over what I'm doing uh, as we go through. And so right now I'm just painting the base coat. Um, and with my particular paint, this takes a little bit of time. So I've sped a lot of this up. Um, but it took me about 10 minutes to paint this whole base coat um, just because I have to build it up kind of slowly in the first layer or my paint gets kind of this funny texture to it. Um, so I'm just painting it a base coat with a raw sienna uh, color. Um, basically, you just want your base coat to be pretty much as even as possible. Um, And then after I did the raw sienna, I am going to go in with just a little tiny bit of an iridescent gold paint um, to give him just a little bit of shine to his coat. And um, it makes his color kind of pop more. And this is a step that is not in the Bay tutorial, um, but I'm just going over him kind of lightly with this paint color. Um, just enough to make him a little shimmery, but not really enough to uh, change the orange color that's already on him. Okay, and then this part uh, is not uh, something that I'd put in the other tutorial, but this is going to be me airbrushing dapples. And I did leave most of this at the original speed so that you guys can kind of watch what I'm doing. Um, airbrushing dapples is one of the things I get the most questions about. And right here you can see I'm just kind of like testing it on his mane because he's a, he's going to be bay, so his mane's going to be black, so I don't have to worry about if his splatter's there or anything. It'll get covered up anyway. Um, but I decided here that my paint was just a little bit too thick, so I left and thinned it out a little bit more and then came back. Um, and I'm testing it out on his mane again. And after I decide that it's okay, I move on to his shoulder right there. And I just moved, I didn't even take my hand off, I just immediately moved over to his shoulder. Um, but again, airbrushing dapples is probably one of those things that I get the most questions about. Um, and they're really just, I don't have a whole lot of things to say to really help, I feel like, because most of learning to airbrush dapples is just practice. It just takes a ton of practice. Because let me tell you, three years ago, I couldn't airbrush dapples worth a darn. You know, I could make really big ones, but I couldn't make anything that looked um, particularly good. Um, so, but in those three years, I have been working for stone a good part of that time. And so I get a ton of practice painting dapples. I'm painting uh, five days a week, eight hours a day. Um, so I get lots and lots of practice getting them done. And that's really what you need. And I will tell you that um, really the only things that I can say is that you want to let out as little paint as you can, get very close, don't let out a bunch of air if you can help it. Um, the uh, I don't change the PSI on my compressor at all from base coat to dappling. I don't I don't change it. Uh, the day that I recorded this, I had it set to forty um, the entire day, uh, forty PSI, and. That, that's it. I didn't change it. It will, you know, when you use your airbrush, it does lower slightly, um, but not a huge amount usually. Um, 
but that's really all I can say. Like, 95% of airbrushing dapples is just practice. Um, and then these dapples are just the uh, small circle dapples. And um, the other part of it is that you do have to move fast. Like, you don't want to spend a lot of time in a lot area because in one spot because... Um, It'll just splatter. It'll just splatter or run or anything. So you got to move really quick. And um, like I said, this isn't sped up. This is the, the, the speed that I was airbrushing them at. Um, and you can see that I'm kind of, after I get going, I can, can go through an area um, pretty quickly. Um, and every once in a while I have to stop and kind of spray away from the horse because I feel like you know, maybe there's a, a clog in it or maybe, you know, it's just not coming out right. Um, and I don't want anything to happen onto my horse. I'd rather spray it out into the air um, where it's not going to make any difference. Um, yeah, that that's really it. It's mostly practice. Um, don't let out a bunch of paint. Be close. Move fast. Um, like I said, this method is just making little circles on the horse to create your dapples. Um, the other method is to do star dapples, which typically I only do on um, like dapple grays because it works out better on those than it does on these colors uh, for me. Um, but the star dapples, instead of painting the dark circles, you're painting the light... Um, usually like it they're usually star shaped but the light part in like with this it'd be the middle of your circle so you're painting the light parts light little dots light little stars um on a dark color instead of doing these dark circles on your light color um but like i said i really typically only do those on dapple grays um I don't really mess with them on any other color because I just don't feel like it It doesn't give the same effect that you would want most of the time. Um, but I will let you guys sit here and kind of watch this for a minute. I did speed up parts of it where it's hard to kind of see what I'm doing. But for the most part, the dapples I didn't speed up or do anything with because that's something that you don't see in the other video. Um, and there were some people when I live stream it that just enjoyed watching this part of it. So I'm going to leave that. And um, the other thing I want to say about the dapples is that you'll see that a good part of my horse is covered in dapples. Um, and for this particular color, uh, I 
I wanted a horse that looked pretty heavily dappled, and when you go in and shade them, you do lose some of the dapples, um, especially if you're making it a darker color, you're going to lose some of them. So I tend to go a bit more on the heavier side, knowing that there's a, a reasonable chance that I will lose some when I continue the shading, um, than trying to just do um, the dapples that I think I need. Um, I try to extend them you know, up further or out further than what I think I need. Um, and most of the time that works out just fine.
Um, and then after dapples, we move into shading and, um, oh, the dapples and the shading are both done with burnt umber. Um, the shading in this is pretty much the same as it is in the Bay tutorial. Um, so I am just taking burnt umber, making his face match the same color of the dapples, um, shading his body in, making sure you want to leave light areas around the flanks, behind the elbows. Um, on this one, I also left um, the hindquarter uh, on each side of his tail just slightly lighter on, as well. Um, that's just because of the particular breed and reference that I was going with. Um, to leave them lighter, you just don't want to put as much paint there. That's it. It's much easier to go from light to dark than it is the other way around. And then the last step after I've got all my shading done is to go in and put all of my black on. Um, and this is going to be a base, so he's got a uh, black inside of his ears and ear tips, black mane and tail, uh, black knees and hocks, uh, black around the eyes, black muzzle, um, and then I go in and I shade the body some with the black as well because I want them to be a bit darker, and it also helps to uh, kind of blend the dapples in a little bit as well. And you can kind of see he's really coming together pretty good now. And with the airbrushing, when I do the mane and tail, I don't take it all the way to the edge of them. I just kind of fill in the large area if there is one, and then I go in and I touch up all of the edges and everything later. But here's your before picture, um, before I started painting him uh, today, and then the after picture. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this, um, and I will hopefully have some other Nemo Paymo videos kind of like this. Um, I will put the link to the baby tutorial in the comments so that way you guys can go back and reference that if you need. And um, I'm planning to have a few more videos uh, with this horse as I continue with his progress. Hopefully a video before too long and I'll see you guys next time.